Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Um, I'd like to say a huge, genuine, big thank you to all of you who have subscribed out there. Um, as many of you already know, I am a personal stylist. That is my normal day-to-day -day job. I also teach others how to become personal stylists. And these videos just started in lockdown because my clients kept asking me for advice on what they should wear. Um, but because so many of you have subscribed, it means I can bring you videos now on a much more regular basis. So a genuine thank you. And if you haven't already subscribed and you could press, press that subscribe or even the thumbs up button, then it really genuinely helps anybody who um, puts this type of content together. So today's video, completely different to anything that I have bought you before. Um, it's not a haul video. It is um, one that you have requested or a number of you have requested. Um, it's about body shape. And today's is the first out of a series of body shape videos I'm going to bring you. And we're going to focus today on the theory. We're going to look at how you can work out what body shape you are, Indeed, what are the different body shapes? Does everybody fall nicely into one category or are we often two or three? Um, and then why it's so important as well in styling that you consider your body shape. And then there afterwards, each week, I am going to be bringing in a different um, lady to dress. Um, this won't be a model. Um, this will be an everyday mum, um, lumps, bumps, right places, wrong places, tall, short, big boobs, flat bottom, um, everything I can find shape-wise. So I can actually give you guys an idea of how I would approach styling them. And we'll do that all live on camera as well. I'll be talking you through the do's and the don'ts. I'll show you why one type of um, top suits them and why the other top doesn't. Okay, but for day, today's video, let's get started. Okay, so why is body shape so important in the styling process? Um, cue Dolly. Um, Dolly here is a mannequin that I have had with me for many a year. Um, she is the perfect hourglass figure. Can you see that? So her shoulders and her hips are perfectly aligned and her waist here goes in by at least eight to ten inches. Now why Dolly here is so important in the styling process is because all high street clothes are designed to fit this shape of body. They're not designed to fit a straight up straight down body, they're designed to fit this hourglass shape. So as a stylist, all I am trying to do is put your figure back into an hourglass shape. So for example, with myself, I am I'm kind of in between an hourglass and a pear, depending on how many um, pies I've been eating. Um, so it means I am hippier down here. So this is where I carry my weight. I've got a smaller waistline here. So in order to ensure that the clothes are fitting me and I am recreating this balanced look, I usually would extend my shoulders a little bit, like you can see it there, just I think you can. When I do that, it's going to make my waist look smaller and hopefully it's going to be more balanced out with my hips. But you don't have to necessarily always broaden. There are other little techniques that you can use. So even the fact that I've got my hair down today is going to add volume to my shoulders and balance out my hips. If I was to pull my hair back like that, I'm probably going to look more slender on top and my hips will therefore look a little bit bigger. So, each week I'm going to bring on, like I said, a model and I'm going to show you with each shape how I would balance them out using different items of clothes. It's not all about putting shoulder pads on everyone and big A-line skirts on, um, on other people. And there are really subtle um, choices of clothes that you can make that will put everybody's figure back into here. <laughs> body shape is all about proportions. It's about recreating this balanced figure. It's about 
highlighting the bits that you do like and disguising the bits that you don't like. So today, for example, I've got a lighter colour top on top. I want you looking here, don't want you looking down there. So first step in the process is to determine what body shape you actually are. And there are a couple of ways in which you can do this. The first is actually to measure yourself. So I'll just grab Dolly back and I'll show you how you would do this. OK, so first of all, you're going to measure the shoulders, the waist and the hips. And the shoulders, you're not measuring from here to here because that's taking into consideration how large your arms are. You are trying to measure from the very tips of your shoulders here across to the other tip. Almost like if you let go of the tape measure, that's going to sort of ping back off like that. That is the shoulder measurement that we're looking for. Then we're going to measure your waist, which is typically around about an inch above your um, belly button. Now, even if you are broader around here and you know your smallest part of your waist is underneath your um, bust line, for the purpose of distinguishing your body shape, I still want you to measure around this central part. Then next, you're measuring your hips. And you want to look out for the widest part around this area. Once you've got all three measurements there, you're going to fall into one or maybe two of the categories. So just before we jump into the different um, types of body shapes, there is a second way of working out what body shape you are. It's actually my preferred method. It's the one that I use on all of my clients. I rarely get a tape measure out these days. And I simply ask them the question, and you can ask this question of yourself, it is, if you do put on weight, where do you put it on? I often find that straight away, the client will say, I put it on my chest and my shoulders, um, and I can look at them and think, yep, that's what I was thinking, you look like a strawberry shape. Um, sometimes my client will say, I put it on my chest and my shoulders and I'm taking a step back, and even after 20 odd years, I can be looking at it thinking, no, you look more like an apple shape rather than a strawberry to me. But usually I would say my clients are right because you know your own body better than anybody else. And sometimes it's just what we're wearing is um, causing us to be imbalanced and look bigger in areas than we actually are. So, yeah, just simply ask yourself, where do you put on weight? measurements are very similar across all three of your points, then you'll most probably fall into the rectangle category. Um, sometimes rectangles do have a little bit of waist def definition, but it definitely is an eight to ten inches. That would actually put you into an hourglass. Um, but the body of a rectangle, you usually have amazing legs. I always love showing off um, a rectangle shape, um, but you are lacking a little bit of um, curvature, shall we say. Um, and sometimes if you're really slight, if you're really petite and a very small size, that can lead to quite a sort of a boyish frame. So often the focus for you is to create some feminine curves in there and we can use layering tools to do that. But ultimately, in order to put your figure back into the hourglass, we've got two options. We can broaden you at the shoulders, broaden you around the hip area and thereby making your waist look smaller or we can just nip your waist in um, and there are many things it's not just a belt it's a dress that has got some um, different coloured fabric around the middle bit or it's got maybe um, a natural hemline itself so it draws the eye in and it makes makes you look like you've got a waist um, Generally speaking, with um, any extra weight gain, you will probably put it on equally all around this area, but your legs usually remain fairly slim. Um, over time, um, you will probably move more into an apple shape, which means you'll get a lot thicker and broader around this um, midsection. So I do see a lot of rectangle stroke apples. If we 
when you take your measurements, your waist is your biggest measurement, um, bigger than your hips and your bust, then you are most likely to be an apple shape or a oval shape, we sometimes call it. Um, it's kind of just the, the roundness all around this middle section. It's a lot sort of thicker set. It's not a little bit of a punch there. Um, us ladies of a certain age going through menopause and God knows what else, we all tend to get a little bit of something there. That does not mean you are an apple shape. It just means you've got a little bit of extra weight there. An apple shape carries it all around the midsection. I'll try and put some pictures up for you. <laughs> I see apple and strawberry shape merging in together as well. So the bus can often sort of be just as large as the belly can. And that's where the sort of more oval shape comes from, where it starts here and it's sort of oval all the way down to that area. However, you do often have very, very good legs. Um, bit of a flat bottom usually. Um, that's a, sort of a main characteristic if you can relate to that at all. Um, and, but any extra weight gain tends to go all around the middle section and sort of all around your bra strap area. So our styling goals to get an apple back into the hourglass shape. Um, we've only really got one option here and that is to broaden you at the top, broaden you from the hips, um, so very much like the rectangle, and sort of skim over this tummy area here. Um, we can sometimes try and nip you in the waist. There are some tools and when I bring my apple shape model in, I will show you how to do that. But generally speaking, I will be broadening you. Now, you probably noticed already I'm using this term broadening quite a lot. And usually it's the type of things that my clients will kind of give me that really scary look about because um, they ultimately, most of them rightly or wrongly, want to look smaller. And there's me coming in saying, we're going to make you look larger here. And we're going to make you look larger down there. But um, I will explain why I'm broadening each model as I dress them live on camera. So we're just covering the basics today so you can at least identify which shape you come into. So for the apple, we're going to try and create length in the torso. We're going to try and um, skim over. We're going to try and get focus attention upwards to sort of this area and above, maybe a nice V-neck, putting a nice necklace in there. Or we want to focus attention down onto these amazing legs. They have to have really lovely slim arms as well. So it's great in the summer with nice hand arms. We can get all the attention away from that section, basically. Okay. So if your um, measurements are largest across your top area, and that could be your shoulders here are the largest measurement, and or your bust is also the largest measurement. It's kind of this shape. So it's like an inverted triangle, um, sometimes referred to as a strawberry shape as well. Um, again, you tend to have really, really narrow hips and um, sometimes a bit of a flat bottom as well. Usually lovely, lovely long legs and really nice slim arms, but it is kind of that body of a swimmer really. Um, and with age, we tend to merge a little bit into an apple shape as well. So you'll find yourself going out like that, but from this lower point here. So you might relate to perhaps some extra weight under your arm, going up a bra size. Um, so generally speaking, you just feel very top heavy. So in order to make a strawberry or inverted triangle shape back into an hourglass, we're going to create volume down below here. That will make your waist look smaller and it will balance out these hips. Uh, I always say the hips, the shoulders 
and the hips really nicely. So it might be things like an A-line skirt, a wider leg trouser, something on those lines. Again, I will show you live with a, a model as the series um, continues. <music> Like me, your measurements have shown that your hips are your largest area, your waist is relatively small and so are your shoulders, then you're more likely to be a pear shaped. Um, now just something to add in here, again all of this detail will be coming through the next videos, but it's important to say that I'm only a slight pear, so let's say I'm a UK 10 on the bottom, then up the top here, I'm only like an eight, and if a nine existed, I'd be like an eight, nine, and then a 10. Um, so I don't need to broaden my shoulders out on every single occasion. It depends on what I'm pairing it with. But it, a true pair would usually have a two size difference. And that's a, a two dress sizes difference between their top and their bottom. Then you have to be really, really strict on the pair rules of trying to broaden your top half to balance out this bottom half. Pairs, you've usually got smaller bust, uh, same with me, slimmer shoulders. Um, and when we put on weight, obviously, we put it on more down on our bottom and our thigh areas. Um, but we have got a tiny waist and often a very flat tummy as well. So that's kind of our main area that we want to focus attention on. And that will help to create the lovely hourglass shape. <music> have the hourglass shape so um this notion of the perfect figure the one that all the clothes are um, made for so what you've got to be really really careful about is not disturbing the balance so for example if you're a perfect hourglass you wouldn't wear a big a-line skirt and then a little strappy top because suddenly you're going to make yourself into a pair because the strappy top will make your shoulders look smaller and the a-line skirt will make your bottom look bigger so you'll be back to that sort of uh, triangle triangle shape so your rule your styling rule is whatever you do at the top always do off the bottom and always show off those beautiful curves regardless of your size the curves that you have naturally been born with are incredibly feminine definitely need to be celebrated and shown off. now i dress real women every single day and if i'm not dressing real women i'm teaching people how to dress real women and I can categorically tell you that most women don't perfectly fit into just one category. Most women are at least two and especially over their, life, uh, their lifetime, they're going to, going to move from one category um, into another. For example, strawberries tend to go into apple shapes with age. Um, hourglasses tend to go into pear shapes. Um, with age. So if you can relate to that, you think I'm a little bit of a pear, but I'm a little bit of a rectangle as well, um, then you need to watch the videos that are coming up relatable to both of your shapes and follow the styling rules for both of them. <music> consideration is your body scale. So this is whether you are petite, tall, average height, plus size. This is really, really important. Let me try and explain how body scale affects the styling process. So let's say we have an apple or oval shaped woman and she is a UK size 16 um, and she is five foot nine, so she's really tall. I'm five foot three, so she's up here. But both of them are a UK size 16. Now the taller lady, because of her height, already probably looks a dress size smaller than the smaller lady. And rightly or wrongly, the smaller lady is going to look shorter, 
um, and and wider. Um, I'm trying to think of the <laughs> the best way to say it, but uh, like myself, I can look shorter and stubbier compared to my best friend who is the same size as me, but she's five foot seven. It's just fact, unfortunately. So when we start to consider body scale as well as body shape, different rules come into play. So, for example, um, on the petite lady, we might want to look at colour blocking, for example, which is going to elongate the frame. Where on the taller lady, we might want to focus on her lovely slim legs and she doesn't need to be colour blocked and we can put the lighter colours on her on her bottom half to show off those lovely legs. Where the five foot three apple at UK size 16, she perhaps doesn't feel comfortable showing her legs um, because they're not going to be as slender as her counterpart. So my point is, it's not enough that you just understand your body shape. You need to understand your body scale as well and follow the relevant rules for both your scale and your shape. And then finally, also for your lifestyle, which will be another video as well. OK, so I did say it's going to be a short and um, sweet video today because um, I don't want to throw too much information um, at you in a general manner. I want to have a model here at the side of me because it's really actually hard to explain why I would broaden somebody and why I would put this particular top on them without them here to um, for you to see. So that's what I'm going to be doing over the next couple of weeks. So please stay tuned and there will be another video going up shortly on um, what's new in my wardrobe this week and obviously party dresses, party seasons coming up. So please don't forget to subscribe. Um, it really does help me out and I'm very grateful for it. So bye for now. I'll see you again shortly.